Congress shall make no law respecting establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble. We are here today peaceably assembled, exercising our First Amendment right to petition the Obama administration for a redress of grievances related to campaign promises he seems unwilling to keep. My comments are related specifically to the Keystone Pipeline. TransCanada Corporation, based in Calgary, Alberta, is the owner of the Keystone One Pipeline, which was approved by the Bush administration and runs through eastern North Dakota. Now, TransCanada is pushing hard for approval to build the Keystone XL Pipeline, which will increase the flow of, Al of, a, of Alberta tar sand oil and send it all the way to the Gulf Coast. Along the way, the proposed Keystone XL Pipeline will cross the Nebraska sand hills where there has never been a pipeline before and several major watersheds, including the Ogallala Aquifer. Because the proposed Keystone XL Pipeline crosses an international boundary, the project requires a presidential permit. And this process involves the U.S. Department of State. However, it is President Obama's decision alone to grant or deny that permit. It's important to note that Broderick Johnson, an XK Street lobbyist, recently joined the Obama re-election campaign. Before assuming his current position, Johnson lobbied on behalf of TransCanada. In, in addition, Paul Elliott, previously a top aide for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign, is currently lobbying on behalf of TransCanada. Already the Keystone One pipeline running through North Dakota is carrying nearly 600,000 barrels a day of the world's dirtiest oil to refineries in the Midwest. How dirty? The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that tar sands oil produces 82% more carbon dioxide pollution than conventional crude oil. That's from, that's from extraction to combustion in a vehicle's engine. I use the word extraction because tar sands production more closely resembles mining for coal than drilling for oil. In operation for a little more than one year, the Keystone One pipeline has leaked 12 times in the United States and 21 times in Canada. The most significant U.S. spill thus far occurred in southeastern North Dakota in May near Cogswell when 21,000 gallons or 500 barrels of crude oil spilled. In early June, the U.S. Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration issued a Corrective Action Order, a CAO, for the one-year-old Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> to call this action unprecedented is putting it mildly. Consider that during the past 25 years, federal regulators have issued only 48 CAOs. On average, those pipelines branded as being an immediate threat to life, property, and the environment have been 45 years old, with the newest pipeline being 25 years old. When giving his Democratic nomination victory speech on June 3, 2008, the end of primary season, Obama, the candidate, said, quote, Generations from now, we will be able to look back and tell our children that this was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal, end quote. President Obama, I've got a message for you. If you didn't mean it, you shouldn't have said it. Since September, tar sand action arrestees and other activists have been visiting Obama for American campaign offices and showing up at events where President Obama, members of his administration, and his campaign advisors have appeared. The protesters' message has been clear. Keep your promise. Stop the Keystone XL pipeline. Yes. On, no yes. on November 6th, protesters right will again assemble in the nation's capital, and this time their goal will be to encircle the White House. A according to organizers with Tar Sands Action, about 3,000 people have committed to take part.